With the official builds of Android 11 now here, we have many of the phone companies working to put out their versions of the update. If you haven't seen my stock Android 11 overview yet, you can check it out in the links above and below. After all, a good amount of what Google is baking into Android at the base level will be present in other OEM editions. Uh, but that's where things get a little interesting, because it's all about the layers that these specific flavors of Android put right on top, and what apps or features they add in. So in this video, we're going to look at Oppo's edition of Android 11, Color OS, which has made the leap from version 7 to version 11 to fall in line with Google's latest. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here are some thoughts in an overview of Color OS on the Oppo Find X2 Pro. Now before I get started, shouts out to Oppo for sponsoring this overview of the new OS. I am going to go through some of the features of Color OS that are added on top of the Android 11 experience, and there are some ways that they also stay consistent to Google's stock version. Oh, and one more thing, as this is Color OS, there are a couple of things that you might expect right out the gate. Uh, one of the main things that you get when you first power on an Oppo device and get into Color OS is, well, there's no app drawer. Don't worry, I went ahead and changed this pretty much immediately, and it's easy to find that setting. Tap and hold on the home screen to get a quick option to do things like adjust the grid, uh, swipe over, hit more, and then change the home screen mode. There, that's better. Uh, this is just one way of seeing how Color OS has come a long way, so let's go ahead and dive into more about version 11. So we're on the Find X2 Pro, which is one of the first phones that Oppo is rolling the update out to. So you can take this always on display as a little bit of a teaser of an upcoming feature, uh, but for now, let's jump into the display settings. Oppo have added a couple of extra options in key features like an adjustable dark mode. Now, since this is an AMOLED display, it might seem like the darkest setting would be the best for benefits like better battery life, uh, but sometimes a high contrast with brighter elements is a bit jarring to the eyes, so it does make sense to try and include a couple of grayer, lighter options. From there, we can move into the power menu, which in regular Android gives you access to toggles for smart switches and smart products. This is actually another nice way of showing off how a company's take on Android can add an extra layer or two, or at least a different look. There's a cool thing that Color OS 11 does, uh, as it puts a little slider right next to the power button after you hold that button for a little while. That allows you to do things like restart the phone or power down. But then all of the toggles that have been added to Android 11 for your smart appliances, smart bulbs, smart plugs, those all populate over on the left side. So the base code gives the options and Color OS 11 gives it a different look. Either way, it's pretty easy on the eyes and the functionality is the same, so I'll take that as a win. And you know what, while I'm at it, why don't I just demonstrate its usage real quick. I have my bedroom light here and I'll just turn it up and set it to purple. Now there are features that interfaces like Color OS have prioritized in the past, but stock Android took its time with. A prime example is screen recording. Now Android 11 does have it, which is great, but it's a little bit bare bones in terms of options. Color OS, on the other hand, has had it for a while, and there are a few things that you can change for extra control. Settings like the resolution, the frame rate for your final video after recording, and bitrate quality are here, as well as an option to turn on the front-facing camera if you want to add yourself into the fun. Now, that is something that you might be interested in doing if you are making things like gaming content. Speaking of gaming, Color OS is no stranger to adding some cool features in while you're in the middle of a play session. Gamer mode is one of the layers to the game enhancement panel, which is a little tab that you can swipe over while playing. The main things that I wanted to highlight here are the bullet notifications, which are not to be confused with bubbles, which we'll talk about later. Instead, notifications scroll across the top of the screen like a marquee. You can't tap them or open the app or anything, and it doesn't really get in the way of any of the action. It's just a nice way of seeing your notifications without losing your immersion. And that's a nice segue into the immersion mode, which forces the top and bottom bars to go away and blocks pretty much anything that can get in front of your game. Uh, this is really getting distraction free during games, and it's a mode that would be nice to see in proper Android. Then again, phones like the Find X2 Pro seem to be a bit more geared towards those power users and gamers who might consider particular features in the spec sheet. And maybe something like the gamer mode or the immersion mode are things that they would add to that spec sheet that differentiate this from Google's own devices. Another thing that Oppo is including from Android 11 in one way or another are bubbles. These are the floating icons that will alert you to the messages from your conversations, most of which will end up at the top of your notification list because that's how Android 11 is prioritizing notifications now. 
There is a bit of a quirk here though, because while bubbles are part of the code in Color OS, you don't really get that button in the notification to create uh, the actual floating icon. Which is a little bit odd considering that bubbles are a big part of what Android 11 is bringing to the table, but that doesn't mean that Color OS has done away with it completely. If you're willing to go a little bit deep into the interface, you can go into the settings, search for bubbles, <laughs> kind of a funny phrase. And then you'll see that you can customize notifications across every application. Now this area already has a lot of different uh, options, but in certain chat applications, you'll see bubbles as one of the ways that you can actually get a notification. Another thing to keep in mind is that like in Android 11, bubbles actually don't really work for certain chat protocols like Twitter DMs or Instagram DMs. And there might be some chat applications that don't support it just yet. Now I know that these bubbles might not be for everyone, especially if you're one of those people that just doesn't appreciate the Facebook Messenger chat heads popping up out of nowhere. But what might have been annoying on one app might be way more useful in another app. I mean, look at this one from Telegram. It's just an easy way for me to ensure that I have my chat available at all times with Isa. But what I find so interesting about this talk regarding Android 11's bubbles is how the different phone companies' interfaces might either prioritize or potentially dial back certain features that come in stock Android. One thing I will say though is that I like how ColorOS 11 renders its bubbles even if it's a little bit tough to find it. It doesn't take up the entire screen and also has links on the bottom for things like opening up the full app if you want to. It does have the same little quirk as in stock Android 11 though. To keep the bubble afloat, you tap an empty area outside of it rather than hitting the back button because hitting the back button seems to dismiss bubbles for some reason. All right, changing gears, one big feature of ColorOS 11 is the always on display. So I just want to say that no matter what phone I use, always on display is always appreciated. It helps the screen be useful and it actually makes it look pretty cool most of the time when you're not even using the device. Now, while always on display options might not be a focus of Android 11, it is definitely a marquee feature for ColorOS 11. Just look at all of these things that you can change. There are a lot of built-in clocks, either digital or analog, and there are a lot of elements that you can turn on and off like the battery percentage. But honestly, even if I'm not very happy with my own artwork, at least there is an option for text only, which I tend to gravitate to anyway. In most cases, when this is available, I just put my personal motto on there as per usual. And if I ever feel like changing it up again, there are a ton of those other options available. And this level of personalization actually permeates throughout the interface. A bunch of options are in their own section in a place literally called personalizations. Always on display is one of the options, but there are a lot of other things like themes and icon styles, color accents, and even fonts. It's possible to go pretty deep into these settings and really make the UI your own, but how about doing something like making your own ringtone? Okay, this is really interesting. Now, if I'm honest, I don't really use ringtones as often as I used to because I tend to have the phone on vibrate uh, and then I get my notifications on things like wearables. Uh, but here, you can get the option to pick... Oh, hold on. But in this part of personalizations, you can pick a pre-recorded set of sounds or beats and then you can change how it sounds based upon certain sliders. Let me see if I can demonstrate. So the sound I have on right now is called relax, but this slider has things like thrilling, vibrant, relaxing, simple, or on the bottom it just has slow or fast. So let's try a few of these out. Let's go slow. Maybe we'll go for something thrilling and vibrant. Now that's a change. Now let's try simple and relaxing. That's a big change. So these are all different moods and speeds that you can pick for a bunch of different pre-recorded or rather pre-installed sounds. Uh, and these are something that you can kind of mess with and you might make something completely unique and decide to use it as your ringtone. Now that ringtone maker does show up in personalizations, but it's also part of a suite of experimental features found in something called Oppo Lab. There are a few other things to play around with like edge lighting and a quick return bubble that shrinks certain apps like games so that you can easily get that accessible icon to get you back into the action. But the one that I thought was pretty cool was the decision spinner. We all have those moments when we can't decide uh, between a few different options on any given scenario. Well, you can use this little app to set them up and then it will randomly pick which thing to do. I actually think I might use this once in a while. 
And finally, the last thing that I wanted to highlight as an addition to the Android 11 features we are getting to know right now is an app that Oppo included called Oppo Relax. Now this is new, at least to me. It's kind of a simple sound app that can be geared towards things like focus. There are multiple soundscapes that you can choose from that are accompanied by looping graphics, which run for a certain amount of time. Maybe you put some headphones on and then you choose to do some Pomodoro work, like set 25 minutes of coffee shop and when it's done, you know it's break time. And then during that break, you can move over to the unwind section and then there's all these little games in there like this bubble popping game. It's an interesting suite of little lifestyle tools. But then it gets even more interesting with the section for Explore, where Oppo seemed to have put in the work to get some real sounds from various cities across the world so that you can audibly experience them. It's even got some specific locales from each city, like hearing the sounds specifically of Mount Takao in Tokyo or Harbor Village in Reykjavik. You know what, this is actually really interesting to see right now, especially at a time when we're not traveling to any of these destinations. It's kind of cool too to supposedly hear what it's like there. So if anything, it's like a unique take on the same ambient sounds that I mentioned earlier for things like productivity timers or honestly for just chilling out. And so there you have it, a look at many of the features of ColorOS 11, Oppo's flavor of Android 11. There are way more things in this operating system, as you probably know, and those are all features that we have probably seen in ColorOS editions before. But these are the big features that were introduced in this edition hot off the heels of Google's official release. Honestly, it's great to see how the different companies style stock Android features to their design language, like the power menu and the bubbles. Uh, but there are, of course, a lot of other features these companies might add in to create an even more robust software experience. And in this case, it's the software found on the Oppo Find X2 Pro. But ColorOS 11 will gradually be rolling out to more phones in the Oppo camp, so if you're on an Oppo smartphone and you're still waiting, it shouldn't be for too much longer. Let me know what you think of ColorOS 11 and this look at a specific edition of Android 11. I'll be exploring many different versions of the new Android updates as they come out, so stay tuned for those and more here at my channel. Have some discussions in the comments down below about ColorOS 11, all the different versions of Android 11 that should be coming out soon, and let me know if you're excited to get updates like this on your particular devices. At the very least, drop some likes on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to keep up with everything I'm doing. And with all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.